Well, I guess we'll start. Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to this new uh, ATEM and Air Data webinar called From Satellite to OTT and Cloud, How ATEM and Air Data Optimize and Secure Our Content Distribution. My name is David Jabolet, and I'm in charge of business development for ATEM in EPAC, and I will be acting as a moderator for this session today. As an introduction, we all know that content piracy is big and costly, and it's growing a right problem for content owners and distributors across the globe. Uh, unlike previous closed systems, today's digital delivery system makes it easier for pirates to steal and restream illegal content anywhere in the world using the same type of infrastructure used by the service providers themselves. Uh, an estimation of lost revenues uh, is more than 29 billion every year, and surely more than that, with over 80% of that piracy happening via streaming. While lost revenue is the most obvious result, piracy also leads up to job losses and reduced GDP, impacting hundreds of thousands of jobs across video content production and distribution. So saving costs and tackling piracy are definitely key topics nowadays and maybe even more taking into account the ongoing pandemic worldwide. That's the reason why ATEM and Eardeto have decided to join forces to help you optimizing and securing your content distribution worldwide. To discuss this topic with me today, I have two speakers. Let me introduce them. Our first speaker is Femin John. Femin is our ATEM VP Sales South Asia. He has been associated with the broadcast and cable TV industry for more than a decade. His background includes extensive experience with broadcasting, DTH, DTT, cable TV, and CADRM, uh, businesses and technologies. He holds a Bachelor of Engineering degree in Electronics and Communication and an MBA international, in International Business from the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade. Thank you very much, Femin, for joining us today. Our second speaker is Mick O'Doherty. Mick works for Eardeto as a technical solution manager focusing on partners in the video content security domain. Mick is originally from Dublin in Ireland. He has worked in a number of countries over the last 20 years, mainly in the UK, Turkey, and Canada. His background is in telecoms and audio and video software and system development, and he has experience working with a number of web and mobile startups, but also with different operators. Mick has previously worked in standards in the Java Jain area and supported efforts, standard efforts in the SIP domain. And currently, he's very active in the VR industry forum, focusing on immersive media security. Thanks a lot, Mick, for joining us today. Okay. Let's like a look at the agenda. We we'll start with a quick introduction of each company, and then we'll move on on the use cases discussion. Four use cases on the menu today. The first one will be around the next generation of hybrid satellite distribution. The second one will be about low latency for OTT using multi DRM and watermarking. The third one will give us an overview of the distribution and encryption from arenas to everywhere. And the last one will cover simultaneous workflows for cloud distribution. And eventually we'll finish with the Q&A section. Feel free to ask any question that you may have using the Q&A button. And please also note that this uh, webinar is recorded and will be made available after the session. Before we start with the introduction, we will run a quick poll that I'm launching right now with three different questions. The first one is, are you currently facing piracy on your content distribution if you're distributing content, yes or no? The second question is, are you distributing, how are you distributing your content? The distribution network, direct to consumer or both? And are you familiar with uh, encryption and watermarking? Yes, kind of. Oh no, feel free to vote and it will help our speakers to maybe orient a bit more their uh, approach on the different use cases today. I'll give it a minute for the people to vote and then I'll show you the results.
Let's give it another 30 seconds for the last one to enter your different votes and we end the polling. Okay, stop the polling now. Ending the polling and sharing the results. So then everybody can see a bit more uh, who in the attendees is currently facing priority. Yes or no, I know that's a, a good news. Uh, distribution network and direct to consumer for both. And familiar with encryption watermarking. Yes, and kind of, uh, and there's, no, no, uh, no one is not uh, familiar with it. So that's, that's a pretty good news. Excellent. So I guess we'll move on to the introduction. And we'll start with you, uh, Mick. The mic is yours. Thanks, David. Um, and thanks everybody for attending. So just a quick introduction about Erdetto. Um, so um, I think a lot of you are familiar with Erdetto. We are our uh, cyber security company, world leader. We, uh, security is our DNA where our background is in media and that's where we've come from, but we also work across other industries, including video games, connected transport and IOT connected industries. So, so anywhere where cyber security is important and um, our uh, expertise and technologies can be applied. Uh, next slide, David. Perfect, thank you. <clears throat> so, um, as, so we, we've been, we've been, Udetta has been around for 50 years. We had our, uh, sorry, over 50 years. We had our 50 year celebration at the, the last IBC that we could all attend in person. And we had a, a 50 year party, which I know looking quickly at the attendees, some of you were at. Um, we have a, a very, very large number of devices and applications secured. A, uh, more than six billion at the last count. A, a lot of our a lot of our solutions leverage um, our white box cryptography technology, which is uh, a technology which we invented and which we have uh, which we hold key patents in. We 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 have a very very wide customer base. We you can see there we serve over four hundred customers across seventy five countries, and we ourselves are. Um, have offices across um, across the world, across all the all six continents or all the major continents. We have um, many many patents in the cybersecurity area, and uh, our our workforce, which is over a thousand people, is very strongly engineering focused. So I think about seventy percent of our employees at last count are engineering focused so so in summary Erdetto is when you when you think your dedo thinks cyber security um, our, our background is media and obviously what we're going to be talking about today and we have uh, but our 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 expertise and technologies and approach um, are can be applied to other industries as well thanks David Thanks, Mick. Thanks, David. And uh, welcome to everyone uh, who's on this webinar. As a quick introduction to Aten, uh, I would usually start at the uh, small bulb that you see as innovation. But um, let's say uh, Aten was founded uh, over four decades ago, and it was a design house, mainly into uh, defi defense, security, and the video industry. And we have been uh, mainly licensing our uh, IP, our intellectual property for Codec to a lot of our, uh, let's say uh, today's competition used to be our customers. And what we have been, or what's the DNA of Atom has been innovation. Innovation, not just in technology, but uh, in business models as well that we have brought uh, into the video compression industry. So, Atem, as a company that's uh, always uh, at the forefront of innovation, has a full in-house uh, design and research uh, capability. And due to this, uh, over the last few years, what we have been able to achieve is 
having gained a lot of tier one uh, references across the globe. And uh, we put in a few of our uh, customers uh, who uh, use us extensively on their uh, compression part or on the video delivery part. And being with tier one references, what our customers uh, have today, uh, I kind of trust us uh, in Atom, not just as a vendor or a technology provider, but they have uh, kind of engaged uh, Atom in long-term uh, business uh, models and consider us more of a long-term partner and a video transformation uh, helper. And this in turn, uh, having achieved these uh, customers and these long-term partnerships have uh, allowed us uh, as a company to uh, grow profitably over I mean, I, I, I remember since 2014 that uh, the company has been growing profitably and has uh, shown at least the last nine years of uh, year on year uh, growth. And how this has also helped us is that Atem uh, has the uh, cash or the money to uh, invest. And we have not only been investing in uh, just the, the technology and R&D, but has been in was investing to grow the company both organically as well as through acquisitions as uh, seen recently by our acquisition of uh, Anivia. In terms of uh, people, I mean, today Atem is over 350 people spread across the globe. And uh, what we have been able to do is uh, to build a support structure locally in each uh, operating country with uh, you know, a regional support and even a regional operations HQ. And I'm, I'm proud to say that even during these uh, times of COVID, we have uh, hired probably over 50 people over the last uh, six to eight months. And uh, David, I think uh, with that, I can uh, stop my introduction. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, and with it, we'll, uh, we'll then start the use cases discussion. Uh, as I introduced earlier on, four use cases today on the menu. And the first one is about the next gen of hybrid satellite primary distribution. Thanks, uh, David. So I guess uh, on this slide, uh, what I want to do is uh, provide an overview of uh, how a primary distributor of content or a broadcaster or a content provider can achieve cost savings by deploying an end-to-end -end solution with ATEM. So ATEM has always, as I've said in my introduction slide as well, ATEM has been at the forefront of innovations when it comes to compression and video processing technologies. And what we have been, uh, I would say, as an innovation brought into the primary uh, distribution space is uh, deploying software only solution for the entire value chain of this uh, workflow and being able to migrate some of our customers and brought in new customers to this uh, software solution. In fact, a few years ago, if you know any video head in always considered consisted in, you know, kind of heterogeneous uh, specialized hardware for each operation. And these were based on dedicated appliances. Whereas with software only workflow as shown uh, on this slide, what we have is, uh, what, what we help our customers is uh, able to explore various delivery methods other than just satellite for primary distribution. Like for example, uh, using IP with uh, ARQ technologies like uh, SRT, Zixi, and uh, RIST or RIST which could either be a primary path of delivery or could even uh, provide a failover or a redundancy to the primary path as well. And using um, the Titan Live, which is uh, Atom's uh, primary uh, encoder or video compression, what this allows is uh, A, allows the customer operator to deliver what we call as pristine uh, video quality. And pristine video quality is one of the key requirements for primary distribution. But if you are able to deliver pristine video quality at a lower bit rate, this directly you know, corresponds to the savings that you can have on the transponder or on your network path itself. 
And Titan Live has been using software encoding and is using software encoding. It's a solution which uh, supports all the features that is required for not just for primary distribution, but for various use cases, as we will uh, discuss further on the slides. It not only supports uh, just uh, a single codec, but uh, a few variety for pretty much all the codecs. And we are always in innovating on uh, bringing in new standards, new uh, formats, etc. cetera. Uh, it is also probably the first encoder to support 40 to 10 bit so that it can be not used just for a primary distribution, but also for a contribution or in fact, the backhaul of uh, services. And Titan Live uh, in itself has been integrated with the uh, Ideto watermark, forensic watermarking for content identification. And uh, Mick will uh, explain that a little more further in uh, its time. And it, what Titan Live allows is our operators or our customers to deploy a very high dense, a very high VQ solution saving not just bandwidth and transponder costs, but also saving uh, the total cost of ownership on, uh, let's say the rack space, the uh, power usage, et cetera. And the same time, not uh, compromising on the video quality. And part of the uh, deployment, as you can see, is the uh, Titan Mux. And the Titan Mux is a fully, again, a fully software, based uh, multiplexer and uh, it is a uh, software only and it's uh, dbb compliant uh, mux the mux can be uh, deployed like titan live on any off the shelf uh, servers that come from let's say uh, dell hp ibm etc and the overall control and management of this workflow is uh, done on the atom management system and again, uh, just going back to the uh, MUX, the MUX has been in Deto, also been integrated with the Deto conditional access system. And I think with this, I would like to uh, pass on the slide uh, to Mick for details on the Deto solution. Okay, so thank, thanks, um, Femin. So I, I guess one thing you mentioned was um, pristine video quality, which is obviously what um, operators aim for what subscribers love and also what pirates love because um, the better the video quality they can pirate the better video quality they can provide to their customers and and they do run you know um, professional piracy is run as a business they have um, uh, they have what they consider customers and what in fact are customers because they pay for it um, they some of the more professional outfits will actually have uh, a web presence and applications that look almost indistinguishable from a uh, an operator's one. They will even have, believe it or not, bundles for family bundles and sports bundles and so on. So we're talking about organized, very uh, professional, in many cases, businesses here, um, which obviously have the advantage of better margins because they don't have to pay for any of their content so unsurprisingly content owners and 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 legitimate operators want to protect their content and um, whether you know whether they're a, a studio a broadcaster whether the content own, content itself is live sports um or you know a film high value high value vod or high value uh cinematic early release whatever whatever the content there are many reasons why content owners want to protect it the the gold standard in the protection industry is probably a document produced by movie labs in um, north america which is a, 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 a company set up by a group of the major studios to handle their technology and define standards for things like security and um it's a it's a it's a publicly available document, the Movie Labs Enhanced Content Protection Guidelines, and you'll see. And um, if anybody's not familiar with it, just ping us afterwards, and we can provide a link. But it 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 covers the type of things that 
we'll talk about in this talk, the importance of um, encrypting, of having a hardware root of trust, of being able to trace content when it's leaked with technologies like forensic watermarking and so on. So we're going to zoom in in the detail now. So I'll talk, talk about this slide very quickly, but just to mention, you know, on this slide, you can see some of the, some of the key, the key ways to fight piracy. Um, one obvious way that most people are familiar with is to encrypt the content and, um, whether that's, in this case, it's a, uh, a distribution use case, and that's using conditional access technology in the OTT world, it would typically use um, ERM technology. And one way or another, what encryption does is obviously encrypt the content so that only somebody with the right key can, can access it. Um, the, the, the secret sauce in, in, in in all media encryption technologies is, is not so much the encryption itself, which is standard AES encryption that the entire world uses. Um, it's how the keys are securely transmitted between the uh, operator and the end user, or in this case, between the, the distributor and the, the operator they're distributing to, or the distribution point they're distributing to. And that's where the, that's where the magic is. And that's where the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the really clever stuff is to make sure that that key cannot be leaked. Um, the the other part of uh, the other sort of major uh, tool to fight piracy that we'll talk about during these uh, discussions is um, watermarking for forensic tracing. What that allows you to do is if, if your content is leaked, um, it allows you identify the source of that leak and one one last thing to say is when when you do identify the source of a leak it's it's you know you have options there are actually um interesting ways to 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 leverage that knowledge and that information and in a positive way to make it an actually sales opportunity rather than just a sort of a draconian shutting everything down so i think with that maybe we zoom in onto some of the detail hey thanks mick so yeah, on the last slide, on the workflow slide, I did uh, introduce you uh, to Titan Live, the MUX, the encoders, the MUX, and the management system. But on this, I wanted to focus on the uh, Titan Edge. Now, Titan Edge uh, is part of our primary uh, solution, our primary delivery uh, solution. And uh, what we have developed is a complete uh, software-based uh, PIRD or a professional IRD, which is um, just software based and goes on to any uh, off the shelf uh, servers. Now, I don't say it's just uh, another PIRD because with the appliance based PIRD, you had a lot of limitations in terms of what uh, features it could support. But here you have a software only uh, IRD which uh, acts as also not just an IRD, but as a universal gateway, but it supports uh, both RF and IP input. And uh, also in the IP, it can does all the ARQ support like Zixie, SRT and RIST. There's some specific features that has been built uh, into this uh, product. Like for example, uh, we can do localized uh, ad insertion, which can be either triggered through SCUTIs or even uh, playlist uh, based uh, ad insertion. And of course, uh, high density uh, descrambling and plus support for any resolution all the way or codecs, all the way from MPEG-2 to HEVC today. And uh, also from low res up to uh, 4K uh, HEVC. Now, uh, a unique part of this innovation has been uh, the development of the CI module. The CI module has been uh, developed or designed to be inserted into the HDT or uh, the hard disk slot on uh, servers. And uh, we can support multiple uh, CI modules. So you're not limited to just one or two. In a 2RU server, you probably can go up to 16 or 18. And so depending on the number of uh, hard disk slots that you have, you could have that many uh, CI modules on it. So what this also does, is bringing uh, kind of, uh, I would say, new uh, opportunities uh, for especially for teleport operators and service providers where they could uh, 
you know, support uh, the businesses of multiple uh, uh, broadcasters on the same IRD, but separated, like I would call it like a multi-tenancy for uh, the IRD itself. And so simultaneously you support multiple operators or multiple broadcasters on it. And going on to another uh, key feature on this uh, Titan Edge uh, product is, again, it's not just another IRD, but at the same time, it has an encoding fun functionality as well as uh, being not just an encoding for linear services, but could do multi-screen outputs as well. And uh, for us, uh, Edito is one of our key partners on this product, along with the CA and watermarking uh, support. And uh, I think uh, with this, I will ask Rick, Mick uh, to uh, discuss further on the details of this. Thanks, Mick. Thanks, Simon. Uh, so, um, as you can see the flow here, we're going to go through each use case and then focus on a particular part of the use case. So, uh, what I'll focus on here very, very quickly is talk about uh, Erdetto's uh, cloaked CA or uh, conditional access solution, and just a, a few, a few key uh, points about it. I, I think many people in the industry are familiar what uh, conditional access does. Obviously, it, it provides it. it it, it secures, encrypts the content and provides access only to those who are entitled to see that particular piece of content or that bundle or, or you know, as, as part of a package they've, they've purchased. Um, Erdetto CCA has a, a well, f first of all, the, um, the, one of the, the strong benefits we promote is that it's a, um, a cardless SCA system, our, our primary um, offering is a cardless CA system, and that is obviously huge advantages from a operations point of view. You don't have to um, distribute, deliver, <clears throat> repair, and so on uh, cards associated with CA. And that if we look at the use case we're looking at here, distribution, you may, you know, that may seem like it's more of an issue for uh, for an end user where you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. But you, you know, you'll find. Um, there are many geographies where distribution, especially say if it's a, uh, a nation which is split up over many islands or something like that, where distribution is even to 10 or 100 distribution points still has a lot of logistics involved in it. So this is quite an important, quite an important point. Um, so, so very, very quickly, I mean, I think people can probably uh, see what we're saying there. The, we, we, we're, we have a very, very wide reach. Our, our CCA is designed to support any, any SOC, any box manufacturer, any distribution method, cable, DTH, IPDB. Um, the, the, the end device can be native Linux, as a lot of set-top box traditionally are, or DK, Android TV, which are uh, very much emerging technologies and so on. Um, we, we also, as Femin mentioned, we have integrated with our solution, um, Erdetto's industry leading watermarking solution, which is Erdetto Tracemark, we'll talk about a little bit later on in more depth. And just a quick note as well, we're working with the HBBTV um, uh, forum, I can't remember it's called a forum or standards body, but anyway, the HBBTV organization to ensure, to, to, to make sure that we're compatible with the CI plus, um, standard which which will allow operators provide a standard look and feel on smart TVs so they can control the UI themselves and give themselves and uh, provide a much more controlled user experience leveraging CI plus and Odetter CCA and with that I think we can move on to the next use case David thank you excellent and so, so the next use case is indeed the low latency multi DRM for OTT solution. I mean, the floor is yours. Thanks, guys. So, uh, I think we need to. Uh, thanks. Thanks, David. Thanks, Mike. So, what we do is this slide is uh, just representing a very small part of the OTT workflow and focusing on the video processing and DRM uh, part only. All right. And the Titan Live uh, solution forms the core of this workflow. And uh, operators today are no more uh, offering just linear services. And OTT is probably moving uh, what I call from a second screen experience to being the main screen. And we still see the subscription revenues dominating the OTT market. The, but the demand for live streaming has always been increasing. 
and mostly this is driven by sports and other live programming like uh, and let's take a scenario where you know you are streaming your favorite football team or your cricket team and playing and it's a kind of a final and you know and it's this is something that i've experienced personally as well and your neighbor or and an equal fan uh, as a traditional uh, linear uh, broadcast, uh, like either a DTH or a cable, as the final moments of the game. But uh, you hear the neighbor cursing loudly or, uh, you know, kind of shouting loudly, despite the fact that there is still well over one minute left uh, for you to complete the game or your device uh, thrill is spoiled. And you know that your team has certainly lost or won in this case. So, this shows the need for a, a faster live uh, latency and to reduce the difference between the broadcast and the streaming is uh, quite essential today. But there are a lot of factors that how uh, quickly a content uh, will appear on a viewer's screen, right? Aside from the infrastructural issues like not being optimized for low latency or modern streaming methods, you know, you, you may suffer uh, latency delays, right? So overall, the issue of end-to-end -end, uh, delay is a significant factor that affects the overall quality of experience of OTT uh, services. And with sports being the key factor driving this demand, the requirement for low latency delivery becomes essential for any operator or any service provider. One way for media distributors to differentiate their OTT platform is also providing like high video quality or pristine video quality with uh, low latency. And Attempt's uh, Titan Live supports this, uh, I would say, um, feature or uh, a wide range of low latency solution from encoding to CDN optim optimization. And uh, Titan Live in itself supports different uh, low latency streaming protocols, such as uh, SRT, L uh, CMAF uh, low latency. And the Titan Live solution can effectively deliver low latency at a large scale, at the same time preserve the video quality as well. And the other thing is while having high value content like sports becomes key to an operator's success. This also makes it essential that a very strong DRM approach is required as well to protect this high value content. And uh, with this, I would like to invite Mick to provide further details. Thanks, Simon. Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go quickly if I can, because I know we're, we're, um, we're, we're, we're in danger of running out of time. Um, so I guess the key thing to say in, in the OTT world on the encryption side, which is what I'll focus on now, um, is Erdetto solution, first of all, is Erdetto uh, control. That's our multi-DRM solution. Um, it, it handles um, all types of OTT, so all, all the different business models, uh, VOD, AVOD, Live, and so on, um, you know, has the ability to, to uh, provide uh, functionality to control different use cases, different control the output formats of different uh, uh, different track types, and so on. We'll talk about it a little bit later. So a, a very very rich, very very um, uh, strong uh, offering that we have had. Uh, we've we've been running for several years now, and we are serving. I can't remember the exact number, but it's in the region. I think it's slightly over two billion licenses per month to give you an idea of the scale. So, so a very, very key key part of our business and a very, very um, uh, strong service that we offer. The, a, a key question, you know, going back to why we need multi DRM. So, so firstly, we we always recommend that people use the native DRMs these days. So that's essentially um, in most of the world, wide, wide, fair, fair play and play ready. And we partner with um, the suppliers of all of those, the, the uh, Google, Microsoft, and um, and Apple. We the the reason why multi DRM is is such a complex area is firstly there are um, 
it, a lot of it is down to do with device reach and device capabilities. So it would seem a, a sort of an obvious thing that if you're using an Apple device, for example, you would expect to be using um, Fair Play DRM. In, in practice, if you're using Chrome on an Apple device, which of course a lot of us do, um, you'll be using Widevine because Widevine is the DRM associated with um, with the uh, Chrome browser, even if it's on an Apple device. And these type of uh, details and these this type of um, subtlety make it actually quite tricky to to uh, to keep up to date with what's going on in the DRM world. There's, there's constant changes. Security is a little bit like a game. The bad guys find a way around a hurdle, and the good guys have to have the next hurdle up in advance. And that means there's it's a constantly evolving, constantly changing playground. And what your data does, what your data control does, is it abstracts that complexity for operators and for anybody who wants to provide content, allows them to get on with their job of, uh, of providing the best content and the best experience possible without having, uh, allowing your data to take care and worry about the security side of things and making sure that when they have, as Femme says, their pristine content and it gets to their user's device, that it'll actually play on that user's device because it's got the right controls and the right support from the multi-DRM system. So I think with that, maybe we look at some of the focus slides. So again, just focusing on one product, that's the, let's say for me, the heart of the video delivery uh, part or video delivery workflow. So that's the uh, Titan Live, which is uh, Atom's uh, encoder slash uh, transcoder. So it's, it's a solution, uh, a software solution for the converged uh, head end. And uh, it's pretty much any network, any delivery. So OTT, IPTV, satellite, cable, it's a single uh, software based uh, solution for all formats, codecs, and uh, let's say multi bit rate uh, AVR outputs with a built in uh, packager for all the OTT uh, use cases. Again, uh, going into uh, support in terms of uh, resolutions, the Titan Live supports all the way from uh, low res up to UHD. And when I talk about UHD, we support pretty much, not pretty much, every uh, HDR standard that's available uh, in the market. Titan Live is uh, known for its uh, pristine VQ. Again, uh, very high VQ uh, at very low bit rates. So, and that's uh, been, we've been able to achieve that due to uh, some AI ML based uh, content aware encoding, especially for the OTT uh, use case. And on the OTT use case, it supports uh, as well the uh, low latency. And in fact, uh, again, an integration with all the uh, DRM uh, key servers as well, like uh, Edeto. And the solution in itself is future-proof, and it's kind of a direct migration path to a full uh, IP architecture, along with various deployment options like virtualized and public cloud, etc. And those are some of the uh, key points that we will uh, discuss as we go further into this presentation. Mick, with that, I'll uh, quickly hand over to you. Great. So what, what I'm going to do is just focus on a couple of um, key aspects, just in the interest of time. So. Um, a key aspects sorry, of your data multi, control multi DRM solution. So, the first three things I'm going to talk about are CPIX, concurrent stream management, and multi track support. So, first of all, CPIX again, I'm guessing a lot of people are aware of the existence of CPIX at this stage. It stands for a content protection inter exchange format. It came from the Dash industry form. And what it is essentially is it's a standardized way for. Um, for multi DRM solutions and packagers and other head end equipment like test systems and so on to speak to each other. Uh, the, the reason it's important, apart from the fact that it's obviously a good idea to have standards because it means you don't have to um, develop uh, you know, multiple integrations for multiple different um, partnering. One of the, one of the, the real reasons why, why, for, why us on the industry supply side and why you on the operator side may or will want to be aware or will want to be aware of the importance of this right now is because it's pretty much been standard. It's been asked in nearly every 
uh, set of requirements that we see see now. And the reason why is because operators want to try and future proof their networks as much as possible. So as well as the you know as well as the just the common sense benefits of CPIX, the the advantage for an operator to be able to future proof their network by using a, a standard interface is is very clear clear. One extra additional advantage that I personally have noticed over the you know over the past maybe six months to a year is it's actually allowing a faster rollout of new services across the industry because um, when somebody wants to invest in some new technology in the security domain they if they if they get that built into the CIP spec, they know that there'll be a broad support for it, there'll be broad payback for their investment. So I think another hidden benefit of CPIX is it's actually um, it's actually accelerating the introduction of new security features. Um, concurrent stream management. So I think most people are aware of the problem of sharing credentials. I'm sure we're all familiar with streaming services where somebody gives their username and password to somebody else and then um, they give it to their friends and suddenly you have 50 people all watching streams from the same service. In, in the past, people, in the past, one of the ways that operators and streaming providers tackled that was via, was with um, device limits. And we know from experience that customers hate device limits. It causes all sorts of problems because people change their devices. They, they have multiple devices and they don't want to have to keep on deregistering one device and registering another one. So a much nicer solution is concurrent stream management. It's well understood by users. Um, it essentially just makes sure for a particular account, you can have say up to four or five concurrent streams as an example. And once you go beyond that, the user will get a message which allows them either say, hey, you already have five streams, you can't start this one, or you can cancel one of the other streams. It gives the control back to the users. Users love it. Um, the best approach is a heartbeat-based approach. There, there, are, there are different ways of, um, of doing concurrent stream management, but a heartbeat-based uh, approach is, is the, um, in, in our experience, and I think in the industry experience, the best way of doing that. There are secure and insecure ways of doing that. You can sort of build a very rudimentary insecure way, but content owners are demanding a secure approach. And um, the Erdeta solution is a secure approach which leverages the DRM mechanisms to provide not only the, the best security, but also the best system performance because it's a, it's a low impact on performance. Uh, so that's a key feature. And finally, very quickly, track types. A very very important feature now we see in, we see pretty much all the time being asked for in in uh, by customer requirements and operator requirements the 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 reason you have track types is that um, different devices have different security levels and different DRMs have different security levels so if we take um, Widevine for example there's three security levels one two and three one is the is the highest one which is the is tied to the hardware and uh, three is the the lowest level of security, which is a software-based solution, which is typically browsers will typically have three. Um, the reason you have track types is so you can have a different key for the different security levels, so that if somebody manages to break a lower, you know, if there's some sort of a, a public uh, hack for a lower level security, and there have been um, examples in the last year where, you know, very well-known browsers have had vulnerabilities exposed, which has allowed people, um, extract the key from uh, uh, from those browsers for DRM content. You don't want somebody to be able to use that same key for HD content or 4K content. So that's why there's a different key for different tracks. And this sounds like a you know an interesting academic discussion. Anybody's ever heard me talk about it before will have heard this as well. But it's very, very real. If you go onto the forums of any of the streaming uh, providers, very, very large global streaming providers, you will see lots of discussions saying, hey, my friend can get 4K content on his browser, but I can only get HD on mine or SD on mine. And, and the re this, is, this is why, the, the reason for that is, is what we've been discussing here. Some browsers will have a higher level of security and a built-in secure media path, so they can get the 4K, some will have lower. So, so it's not just an academic discussion, and it goes back to what Femin was saying right at the beginning, this, that you want to give your users a, a pristine video experience so it's important to understand these these aspects and I think we can move on then David thank you very much Mick indeed a lot of uh, interesting points um, so we'll try to go quick right uh, the next uh, 
use case is for from arenas to everywhere just a, a remark for all the attendees feel free to ask any question if you have using the q a uh, button and then we can respond at the end of the presentation uh femin over to you thanks uh david thanks mick so again i mean i want to emphasize on the fact uh, that atem is an end-to-end -end solution provider in the whole video value chain and the titan solution enables our customers to move content from the source, like uh, from the event locations, all the way to end user, using the building blocks that uh, make the Titan solution. And we do this all the while keeping our promise of the highest video quality, which in turn uh, helps uh, reduce the costs for my customers, for our customers, through unmatched compression efficiencies. and. Uh, the solution itself being quite uh, feature rich. So in this example uh, is a content acquisition from stadiums or events where the Titan Live uh, product enables the operator and the content producer to be able to support like various input formats, for example, like SDI or uh, J2K or uh, you know, SMPT uh, 2110 or 2022-6. And what this allows is in terms of uh, input or the flexibility in the input provides our customers the required operational, operational features in any kind of situation that they may face on ground. The video delivery value chain from Titan also allows our customers to have different uh, delivery options. So in this case, we show three options here, like for example, the linear delivery, which can be over satellite, or which uh, could be over IP using uh, ARQ, SRT, Zixi, or um, RIST. And this could be done with a, tight, a part of a Titan product called the Titan Edge. And at the same time, since Titan Live uh, supports multi-screen or OTT delivery, we could deliver ABR, HLS, or let's say a low latency CMAP feed directly uh, to the CDN from the uh, event location uh, itself for OTT. And going further, there's uh, the Titan Playout and the Titan File, which uh, allows a content uh, or channel origination for the uh, customer. At the same time, uh, it simplifies the whole process of uh, you know, originating uh, content. And uh, I think this, this kind of describes the whole workflow where the Titan solution or the building blocks can be used in different parts of your video delivery workflow to build an end-to-end -end, uh, solution. And uh, I think I'll uh, request Mick to uh, further discuss uh, on the Deto solution for this part. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, actually, David, maybe we can jump into the next slide, because what I want to focus on is watermarking in, 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 uh, in this particular use case. Yeah, uh, that's great. So the um, the uh, a data watermarking solution, as, as some of you, or as many of you hopefully will be aware, is called our data trace mark. Um, it's, um, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a forensic based watermarking solution. So it's, it's worth making sure that everybody's on the same page there. Um, a watermark can be either visible or invisible. Um, visible is where you know, you'll see if you're on an airplane or something, you'll sometimes see the airline's name on the on the bottom of the screen, or if you're in a hotel, you might see some number in the corner, which is a, you know, some a number associated with your stay in that hotel. Um, what what your data trace mark is 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 an invisible watermark, so a forensic watermark, which is hidden within the uh, the frames of the video, and it allows the uh, it allows uh, information an identifier to be embedded within the video in a way that the end user can't see. And if that video is copied, even if somebody points you know, a, high ca uh, a camera, a high quality camera, a high quality screen, captures the content, produces really nice high quality pristine content, as we're saying earlier on, for their subscribers, that watermark will, will um, survive that transition if you want, and will be available for us to um, detect and to identify the source of the content and it's you know I, I use the example of high quality screen and high quality camera because at the end of the day 
pirates are running a business, as I mentioned earlier, they want high quality. But if it's low quality as well, the watermarking is designed to be robust, to stand up to you know, typical tax like uh, cropping, um, shaky camera, bad angles and so on, and, and also re-encoding and so on. So it's a very, very robust, invisible, hidden identifier within the video stream itself, if that makes sense. And what, this, what, what the focus on this slide is showing is that um, the watermarking is part of a, of a, uh, a combined anti-piracy story, a, a combined way to fight the piracy. So um, as well as the encryption, um, as well as the, uh, the, the forensic watermarking hidden in it, we also have services around online piracy detection, so detecting the streams. And when you put all of these, and, and sorry, services around how you deal with the uh, deal with the content when you've identified not only that it's that it's been pirated using our, our piracy detection services, but also identify the source of that piracy by using our watermarking service. You then have a number of options. You you know you have legal options where you can um, pursue whoever is pirating the content and use that information to shut down the piracy um, operation. And we have many many use cases and examples of that, which. Quite often you'll you'll see in the news because some of them involve you know, quite high profile and um, even police operations at sometimes, um, but it can also that information can also be used in a in, in a kind of an upselling way. So instead of if you take a live sports example, if we go back to Femin's example of watching a uh, a live uh, say the cricket World Cup or the soccer World Cup, football World Cup or something, um, and you want to you you identify the source of a piracy. So some somebody's stream is being used to provide, uh, let's say, um, a hundred thousand viewers on OTT are watching a part of content. You identify the source or sources of that stream. You have the ability to shut them down, so you you turn off that content immediately. But you also have the ability to send a message to replace that that stream with a message which says. You are watching pirated content. Did you know that this content is actually available in your region? Um, with you know from these sources, and quite often, I mean, it sounds bizarre, but quite often that can actually result in a conversion, and you actually manage to turn a sort of a negative situation, piracy, into something that actually can generate new subscribers. Because there's a lot of casual piracy where people are um, they're they're watching content because they didn't realize it was available somewhere else, or sometimes they the, the pirate organizations are so professionally run that they didn't actually realize they were watching pirated content, and it's not even necessarily that much cheaper. So, um, so the watermarking and forensic watermarking is part of a tool set: encryption, watermarking, online piracy detection. You know, with DRM and conditional access, they're all part of a tool set to allow you fight piracy and hopefully to actually build your business in that fight as well. And um, if I hand over to Femin, I think you're going to talk a little bit more about Titan again, Femin. No, I think David uh, will move to the next uh, use case. Okay. Thank you, Mick, indeed. Thank you, Femin. We're going to move to the last use case because the time is running short, unfortunately. And we'll talk about simultaneous workflows for cloud distribution. Uh, let's try to wrap this one in, uh, in five minutes, guys, to have a couple of questions in the end. Thanks. So I can uh, quickly go over the slide. I mean, it's the same uh, solution, the same products. But post-COVID-19, what we have seen is 93% uh, of the enterprises or 93% of uh, operators have a multi-cloud uh, strategy. And the Titan solution, including the Titan Playout, the Titan Live, the Titan Max, the Titan Edge, and uh, the, uh, the whole Titan solution is agnostic to uh, cloud or agnostic to the infrastructure itself. So you have flexible uh, deployment models for all Titan products, solution, et cetera. And I mean, for example, one, you could deploy on bare metal with just off the shelf uh, servers and supporting many uh, legacy inputs and output modules, as we have seen in the uh, previous uh, use cases. Or we could have a full public or private cloud uh, deployment with all the products and the uh, solution itself. Alternately, you could have a hybrid uh, cloud deployment, which could leverage both uh, the on-prem uh, cluster or on-prem cloud or the bare metal deployment along with the public cloud uh, infrastructure. 
And what HM has done in this case is have built a, a strong partnership with the various uh, cloud providers like uh, Google or uh, AWS or Azure, and even some regional uh, cloud providers. And we have also helped our customers to uh, pretty much build their own, own on-prem clouds. And these, de these deployments are not just, uh, how would I call it, like limited to uh, just OTT use cases, but we could uh, look at, uh, you know, leveraging the cloud uh, infrastructure even for legacy broadcast services as well, like for DTH, for cable, or even for primary uh, distribution. And uh, yeah, Mick, uh, with that, I would uh, rather uh, move to your uh, part of the presentation. Okay, and so, so all of our solutions, uh, very, very quickly, all of our solutions are, are uh, run either in the cloud and all of them can can work with other components in the cloud. So what I'm going to do is, if we can go on to the next slide, David, I'm just going to dive into some of the, um, you know, some of the advantages uh, that the uh, that the that the cloud can bring to to solutions. I, and again, I, I think at this stage of the history of the cloud, I think we're probably preaching the converter because I think everybody is familiar with these. But I, I'll highlight them anyway. So firstly, just to mention, you know, solutions like Adata Control are multi DRMs. They're not solutions that were built for an on-premise and then were migrated into the cloud they are um, they are they are designed from day one to be cloud native and to to leverage cloud scalability and cloud flexibility they you know we we can provide on-premise um deployments for people who want them in which case we containerize everything and do that but they are designed from day one to be to be cloud native and it's important because um it's a much more efficient architecture if you design for the cloud than if you take something that's not designed for the cloud and put it in the cloud, as I'm sure everybody's aware. So very, very quickly, a um, couple of, again, obvious, but still nice to point out um, attributes and um, flexibility and scalability. Obviously the cloud, one, one of the, probably the biggest benefit of the cloud allows you scale up and down as you need. And quite often scaling up is easy, scaling down is quite tricky, but it's very important if you want to run a, you know, an efficient and a cost effective service to be able to scale down when you need to as well as scale up. Uh, CI and CD, constant integration and constant delivery. Again, it's kind of, um, it's maybe a little bit hidden, but by, by, by providing our service generally as a, as a cloud service, it's definitely our preferred way to provide it to everyone. Um, it allows, it means that everybody always has, is running on the very latest version of our software. And in the security domain, that's very, very important because as I mentioned earlier, security is a game. Every time the bad guys come up with a problem, we have to uh, address it as well. And finally, geodiversity. The cloud, obviously leveraging the cloud's reach and presence allowed us, allows us to provide a fully geodiverse solution. Over to you, Femin. Thank you, Mick. So what I want to say is we are always witness, we are currently witnessing a migration to cloud. And uh, as Actium, what we are doing is making this migration less complex and easier for our customers. What we have done in that is uh, the Titan uh, product or the Titan solutions are uh, a cloud native based on uh, microservices and uh, supported by uh, the Kubernetes as well. And what we want to do is uh, leverage a unified data center architecture for video delivery. And it's kind of a plug and play approach uh, where we have an easy uh, integration path with any public hybrid or a private cloud. And finally, what I want to uh, say is that Atem as a solution for provider, we want to enable uh, the video cloud of our customers, the video cloud operations and services of customers, but at no sense today are we selling a managed service to our customers. So we don't compete with any of our customers on this part of the uh, business as well. And uh, Mick and David, with that, I would like to uh, come to an end for this uh, slide as well. Thank you very much, I mean, thank you very much, Mick. Um, so we are reaching the, the Q&A uh, section, uh, a few minutes left. We we have a question indeed um, for you, Femin, and, uh, and for you, Mix. The question is, is there any additional feature or functionalities of ATEM, uh, MUX, and Adato KMS integration? 
can guys any of you take this question sure i can i can make a you know a, a quick answer which is i mean i i think the um so our, our solution our solutions teams are working very closely together and um, across our solution range we have some um joint deployments in north america where we've been able to demonstrate one of the benefits which is very very fast time to market and based on you know having done some um uh solution integration work together specifically looking at the um at the at the kmx and mux i think the benefits really are and um, will come from uh, smaller footprint and tighter integration and and features available out of the box immediately so integrated security features obviously encryption but also uh, watermarking available out of the box immediately i think maybe it's something we can follow up with offline if people are of more interest but i think those are probably the key benefits thank you um, maybe a quick one or soft seal for you mick um can watermarking be used on uh, vod content as well as live Yes, absolutely. So the the watermarking, so watermarking is a is a is a it's a complex technology, and there's a lot of engineering involved. And when I say that, um, it's what I mean when I say that is that there there are different flavors for different situations and different ways you can tune it for different situations. But simple answer is absolutely watermarking can be used for VOD as well as live content. Excellent. Um... Not too many questions. Maybe a last one before we uh, we end this session. Um, do I need to support more than one DRM? Nick, I guess this one is for you as well. Yeah. So so that's a that's a question we actually see quite often. Um, the the simple answer is if you want to have the maximum reach and you know reach as many customers as possible then yes because different devices and different browsers use different drms so in general to you know to reach you know over 99 percent of your of your end users you you'll want to support fair play play ready and wi-fi and i think that's the simplest answer to that question thank you very much um I would like to thank you both very much for the uh, discussion on those use cases and all the valuable information. Uh, if any of the attendees has any questions, feel free to reach out to us uh, at those two email addresses, sales at atem.com or communications at .com. From there, I will wish everybody a good day wherever you are in the world. Uh, this session has been recorded and will be available very soon. Uh, on both our website uh, at them.com or edit.com. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone.